welcome to Virtual Worship Services with Sherry Hales Ministries. If you have joined us before, you know we start with worship. This is our time where we put our mind on the Lord. We just let Him know we love Him. We care about Him. We thank Him. You know, we always want God to care about us. We always want Him to focus on us. But worship is the time where we can focus on Him. Let him know, I'm here offering worship to you because I notice you. I notice you in my life. I notice you every day. Not only do I notice you, God, but I need you. And so we worship him to let him know, I need you. I notice you. I appreciate you. And I want to say thank you. Would you worship with me today? It doesn't matter how you worship, eyes open, closed, whether you hum, whether you sway, whether you are someone who gets up and walks around. God just wants us to worship in spirit and in truth. Let's worship God today. Father, we come to you to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your goodness in our lives. Lord, we notice you today. Lord, we notice you. We see you, God. God, we notice your goodness. God, we notice it. We think about it, God. We think about how good you are, God. We think about how things would be if you didn't care about us. If you turned your back on us. If you didn't want us. God, we think about it. And we thank you that you do love us, that you do care about us, God, that you're there for us, God, that you care about the things that happen in our lives. It matters to you how we're treated, how people treat us. It matters to you the things that happen to us in our lives. It matters to you the things that happen to us in our bodies. It matters to you. The things that happen to us in our mind, in our psyche, in our daily existence, you care. And for that we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not only do you care, but you have the power to make a difference. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Lord, you have the power to turn things around. Glory be to God, hallelujah. God, you have the power to intervene. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And Lord, you have all power. There is no power. There is no force that is greater than you. That's why your word says, If God be for me, who can be against me? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are all we need. And so we bow. We bow before you, letting you know, God, we thank you. Glory be to God. God, we trust you. We worship you. Have your way in this virtual worship service, God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let me be a vessel of good use. I submit to you. Have your way. Touch the people that will hear this message, whether it be today, tomorrow, or sometime down the road. Touch, heal, deliver, set free. Open their eyes, God, so they notice you and they know they need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I want to start with a psalm. So last week I started Psalm 78. It's a very long psalm. And so I've broken it up. And last week I read Psalm 78, 1 to 12. And today I want to read Psalm 78, 13 to 29. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink, 
as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yet they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he get bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and an anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels food he sent the meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in heaven, in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about the habitations. So they did eat and were well filled for he gave them their own desire. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. And today the scripture will be 1 John five thirteen to 15. 1 John 5 13 to 15 1 John 5 13 to 15 and the title of the message is His Word is True His Word is True His Word is True 1 John 5 13 to 15 These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. That is 1 John 5, 13 to 15. His word is true. That's the title of today's message. His word is true. Today... As I've said before, and I'm sure I will say it again, there is a problem with truthfulness in the world in which we live today. There's a problem with truthfulness. People like the idea of truthfulness. They want to believe as being true, yet they have no real... Um, they have no real um, appreciation for what's actually true. And so instead of holding to the truth and things that are actually true, what they do is they take the thing that is a lie, the thing that is a lie that they, that they would prefer to be the truth. So today it's about preferential truth. It's about, well, I prefer for this thing to be true. And so they take the thing that they prefer to be the truth. 
and they move it over to the category to say this thing is true or they place a mask on it they place a mask on the preferential truth and prevent present it as if it is the actual truth today people don't care about really what's true they care about what they want somebody else to believe is true that's what it's about today it's about what they want people to believe It's about, I want you to believe this. See, they they know what the truth is themselves. They they know, they're not confused, they're not see. And, and a lot of times when you see, as people are being caught in their, you know, deceit, they're being caught in it. And what they'll do is they continue on with the lie. And they take things and they try to manipulate whatever they can, whatever they can. They try to manipulate whatever they can to try to make it seem as if <laughs> the thing that is a lie is the truth. They, they take it to all types of extremes all types of of extremes not overlooking the most minor of things the things that would seem silly but they they take it to that extreme because they want the lie to be that believable they want it to be so believable um that well, if this little thing there that seems unimportant is, is present, it'll seem more believable. But all the while, they know what the truth of the matter is. They themselves know what the truth is. But they keep going in the lie. And so they do it to the degree that other people that, you know, they other people, they know what the truth is too. But they start to think well do they even really know what the truth do they know that what they're saying is actually the lie or do they somehow believe it they go that far into it where people start to question do they know that that's a lie yes they know it's a lie they know it's <laughs> yes yes they know it's a lie but they want their they are so um vested they are completely vested in their deceit that they are not willing to stop lying they are completely vested in it now the only time that they will stop the lie that they will stop it is if is if um it becomes um untenable they can't they can't keep it up for for some reason or or um it becomes more beneficial to just go ahead and tell the truth but other than that they're going to stick with the lie because they're given over to it in every in every possible way so so this is what's showing up in the last days it's weird right it's very strange because it seems like it came out of nowhere but it really didn't it didn't come out of nowhere the it has been building up to this for a long time that deceit will become the um the i guess the method of operation it's the way that people operate now they operate in a place of deceit who are these people that are doing this those whose father is the father of lies that they are given over excuse me to satan either willfully they willfully know what they're doing and they have given themselves over to him or by default because they have rejected god because when you reject god the only other choice is satan and so by default 
you you accept him and so a lot of people even that are saying that they are Christians they're saying that they're Christians but Christians being a Christian is not about um, it's not about what you say it's about what you actually are so just like a, a parent a child's a parent um, has children those children can deny their parent and say that's not my parent but the proof is in the truth the truth of the matter and so the DNA will reveal the truth yeah this is truly my child this is truly my child I said it's my child this is my child the proof is in the DNA it's the same thing with Christianity the proof is in the DNA it's going to show up. It has nothing to do with what you are saying. The evidence will be there. It will just be there that you really are a Christian. And so people are running around talking about they're Christians, but they're full of all kinds of deceit. They have, they, they're deceptive. Their character uh, is not that of a Christian. Um, you know, they might know scripture. That's not proof that you're a Christian. You know, that's even back to my other example. You can say, you know, this is my parent. Um, my parent was born here or there. My parent works here or there. My parent likes this or that. You know things about the person, but that's still not your real parent. The same thing with people who quote scriptures and they're spouting out these scriptures they know these scriptures but that's not your he but God is still not your parent he's not your father although you know things about him it doesn't mean that he that you belong to him it's the same thing and so the people that are doing that in these these days these days the Bible tell us about as the last days we don't know how long the period of last days will last. It's not like, oh, well, today is the last day. Tomorrow is over. You know, so no, it's we don't know how long this period is. But the things that the Bible foretold are showing up. And so there is a strong spirit of deception that is now prevalent in the world. It's prevalent. And um, and. And so, you know, it's prevalent. But those that are lying, they know that they're lying. Now, there may come a time at which, because there is a story in the Bible, um, and, uh, you know, I haven't looked at it in a while, but it's in the book of Daniel, um, where the um the person was so corrupt and so I'm not going to try to tell you in detail because honestly I haven't read that in so long but um I, I believe he was the king and he had gone so far into his wickedness until the wickedness completely overtook him and he actually became like a madman he became you know what he was given to he, he eventually became like a madman and started being like an animal, like like a wild animal, and uh, even started to look like one. But, so some people might go so far into this thing of deceit where they become, where it overtakes them, and they no longer can really distinguish between truth and lies anymore, where they have given themselves over to it so long that it actually then takes control of them and they begin to go into a psychosis where they no longer can really distinguish what is truth and what is not true and so that may may happen to some as well as they are given over and they keep pushing into this deceitfulness and not back off from it they may be Become a victim of their own um, lives themselves, and so. Um, but God's word is true, okay. And so that that is why we have to, as Christians, hold on to His word. There's going to be so much in these last days with the deception. 
it's like everywhere and it's in at all different levels okay it's at all different levels which you must understand is that anything um, is susceptible to deception it's in everything so you so the systems of the world the systems of the world are operating on sy systems of deception and now it's been not not that they haven't been doing it for a long time okay so they've been doing it but it's starting to show up now so some of them are being exposed for their deception now they operate on principles of deception all types of agencies governmental agencies organizations companies workplaces they are filled with that deceptive spirit and deceptive practices and so if you are somebody who is involved in these organizations and these companies and these different things and they are practicing in deception deception is bigger than just lying okay it is it is it has to it goes also into trickery uh, trickery um, misrepresentation purposely trying to um, make something seem like it is something that it's not purposely trying to confuse someone <clears throat> even trying to push people um, into things that they would not choose trying to um, and that's a, shows up a lot in the marketing trying to um, push people to make choices that would they would not necessarily choose or placing options in a way strategically so that people make a choice that they didn't want to choose because of the placement of the options or placing something there and and having someone think that they're about to do something and at the last second they switch it before the person can pull back and so they cause the person to choose something that they wouldn't have chosen there the the world is operating on deception now it's and, and the world will be destroyed by it okay the world is damned and they will be destroyed by their deception but it is in everything okay and those that are real christians that really know the lord that really follow the lord the enemy hates hates us and he will use those in in those positions to try to um, bring about harm to those that really hold on to and know and love the Lord. But God's promises are true. His word is true. Everything belongs to the Lord. Okay. At the end of it all, everything, even the devil, belongs to God. And that's hard to believe, right? But he didn't make himself. He is a created being. He belongs to God and he has a leash on him. And so he can only go so far as far as God lets him go. He can only do what God says that he can do. God is the one that is in control of everything. And so Christians stay uh, in the place where you are with God covered by the blood of Jesus glory be to God hallelujah because he shed his blood to protect us to give us protections to give us provisions so that we are in a covenant relationship with him and he does not lie glory be to God hallelujah first John 5 13 and 15 these things have I written unto you that believe you have to believe on the name of the Son of God. And so those that are getting involved in these twisted doctrines, they are lies from the pits of hell where people, men and women, they've learned about the Bible. And so they can speak and make it sound like they know God, like he's their father. But again, remember, just because you know something about someone doesn't mean that you are a relationship in relationship with him. It doesn't mean that that's your real father. 
Just like, again, somebody could say, that's my mother, that's my father. They were born here or there. They do this or that. They live here or there. It doesn't mean that you're their child. Just because you could say it. You can know something about someone, but that doesn't mean that you have a real connection to them. And so there are some that can say things about God. It sounds like they know him, but they don't. And they have created a twisted doctrine that will lead you to hell if you follow them. You've got to know the word of God for yourself. If you care about your eternal soul at all, get to know him for yourself so no one can trick you. We are in the days of deception. But God's word is true. 1 John 5, 13 to 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. See, this is true only, only through Jesus. A twisted up um, doctrine, which I call the pretzel principle or the pretzel process. They twist the doctrine, make it say something that the word of God does not say if it is rightly, uh, rightly divided. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You only have it if you are really believing on the Son of God. If you start believing the twisted up lies that these people are saying or falling for the deceit that is rampant in the world, you're going to lose your eternal soul. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It matters what you believe. The world right now is full of deception. It matters what you believe. You can't put faith in these worldly organizations. These organizations. These, these companies. These workplaces. Um, just because somebody has a job has a badge, has whatever, it doesn't mean that they are serving a good purpose. Look, open your eyes and see the truth. These people have access and they, and they use it for wickedness in many instances. Not in all instances, but many times they do. And they can influence people and behaviors. And they have the ability and the resources to do things that regular people cannot do. And they are using it for wickedness in these last days. Not everybody, okay? Because there's a lot of people that are still right. Open your eyes. Don't get involved with these deceptive practices or let somebody recruit you to do wickedness because at the end of the day, God is still going to hold you accountable for your own actions for what you did. If you are given over to um, wickedness, deception, deception, um, cruelty, and you utilize your resources, you utilize your products, you, you, you are somebody who has created um, uh, a part of these systems that everybody needs to use today on the internet and um, computers and um, webcams and all of these things and you are using it and you're sitting back watching people in their own home or whatever and doing all types of weird, wicked, de uh, deceptive things that, that's not right. And you're doing it. Anyway, know that you're going to be held accountable for it. You will have to answer someday for what you did. It doesn't matter that somebody told you to do it. You're going to be held account accountable for your own behaviors. And you have to know that. And you have to know that. See, the real word of God <clears throat> will tell you something you don't want to hear. But. If you will heed to it, it could save you from eternal damnation. And some people are going to laugh at that. And they're going to be like, I want to go to hell. Okay, you can say that until you get there. And you're going to change your mind real fast. You're going to realize there's no party in hell. And that you lost your eternal soul. 1 John 5, 13 to 15. 
these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, did you hear that? This is God's promises to his children that are his real children. If we ask anything, and we can ask him anything. We ask him to protect us from those that try to harm us. And he is there. And you can't see his hand moving. But you can't stop the force of his power. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him glory be to god hallelujah god is somebody you don't want to play with and you don't want to mess with his children and if you do you will see why you should not have done it god is the real deal he is the truth and there is no lie in him. I hope that you will take heed to this message and that you will care about your own eternal soul. You don't have to take my word for it. Find out about him for yourself. 66 books called the Bible. Thank you for joining me today. And if you are someone that does not know the Lord and you want to know him, it's a simple prayer. You can say it from a sincere heart. God does not like deceit. He's not into deceit. He's not into deception. He's not into trickery. He's not into manipulation. He's about sincerity. You have to say this from a sincere heart. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today to answer the call of salvation. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I admit that I am lost in need of guidance and direction. I come to you today to repent of my sins, which means to turn away from them and go in a different direction. God, please forgive my every sin and come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I know that in being my Savior, you saved my soul and redeemed me from the penalty of sin. I know that in being my Lord, I must learn of you, follow you, and be one with you in covenant. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you that you are now my Lord and Savior, and I am now born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Luke fifteen ten tells us that heaven and the angels rejoice when even one sinner repents. One, you, my brother, my sister in heaven, there is a heavenly rejoicing going on for you, a party, a birthday party, welcoming you into the family of God. The Bible does not lie, and that rejoicing is because a soul was saved from eternal damnation. And I welcome you, my brother, my sister, into the family of God. If you don't have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible believing church that and Bible believing teaching church that you currently attend, I welcome you um, and invite you to follow along with us. Um, if you don't have a, a ministry that you follow along with, you can follow along with us. You can visit my website, www.sherryhealthministries.org. There you will find many resources to help you to grow in your faith walk. I ask that the Lord will bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.